Hi, you're listening to Kate Palmer from sparkletart.com. Today I'm going to show you, start to finish, how I created this gorgeous mixed media piece. I'm going to start by using the Caribbean Cruise set of flat Fabios from Lindy Stamp Gang. Now I'm going to uh, spray first with the Pineapple Paradise, which is the yellow. Now these are quite bright. I love that. Next is the Luscious Lime. I don't want to cover everything, but I'm just trying to add it in enough spaces to let it make it look really pretty. Um, this is the Mango Mania. Now, yes, I'm just going for it, and I'm adding all of the colours on the one page. Normally that would end up as a horrible, hideous mess, but just wait. That's the really special thing about these Fabios. Next is the Hibiscus Rose. I'm going to add that in a few more places. And lastly, the Caribbean, Caribbean or Caribbean Blue. Now, you might have noticed two things here. Firstly, the colours are not getting muddy. They're actually staying quite crisp and quite bright. Second, where they're blending, you're actually getting new colours. So over here, I've got a little bit of purple. Again here, a bit of purple. Yet, you know, I didn't spray any purple on. I just added these particular colours. I love that about these. They do not get muddy. Can you see what's happening here? So as they air dry... I'm getting little colour rivulets bleeding from one into the other. Love this. I'm also getting a little bit of mixing between the edges of the colours. And you can see how bright and true these are staying. So that is one of my favourite thing about the Fabios. So air dry or heat gun, it's up to you. Um, if you leave it to air dry, you'll get these awesome little um, unexpected bonuses from the colours. So you'll get patterns and... Um, all sorts of interesting things. If you heat set it, what you'll find is that the patterns will remain exactly as they are. So if you can see something with, you know, five little pointy bits now, that's what you'll get when it's dry. When you let it air dry, sometimes those bleed into another colour. Sometimes they dissipate, so you don't even know that it was there. They just kind of blend in with everything else. So it really is up to you. For me, I'm going to give this a quick shot with the heat gun. Now, this is watercolour cardstock. It doesn't have to be. I just know what I'd like to do to it afterwards. Um, so I thought this might hold up a little bit better. Now, again, I don't really need to dry this entire thing so that it's completely bone dry. Just a quick zap. Can you see how gorgeous that is? You've got those little fans of colour and it's all still really, really bright. So one layer only. And that's the result that you're going to get. The next step is to add a bit of interest to the background. So I'm going to be using Deep Purple and a couple of these stamps from the Dilutions range. Apply stamped images to the edges of your cardstock to create sort of a border. I've applied the flowers slightly lighter than I have the other side just to add a bit of difference. Now the next step is going to be with the Delicata ink pad and again um, it's just adding a bit of zizz to the background. Now the Delicata pad is a really delicate gold and depending on the viewing angle it can be brighter or darker. I have a little bit here you can see it when I tilt it to the light and because this next stamp is bold it will be much brighter. So I'm using this to create, I suppose, kind of a border just around the edge. Next I have this gorgeous stamp from Jane Davenport and it's produced by Stamping Bella and some Brilliance ink. Now the reason I'm using the Brilliance is I've discovered a really handy thing. If this doesn't stamp exactly as you might like, and sometimes on watercolour cardstock it doesn't. You can use the reinker to fill in any gaps. So make sure the stamp is nicely covered. 
and yes I've made a huge mess around the outside so I'm going to have to be quite careful here and then position it wherever you'd like it and then just press down not too hard and I'm attempting to keep my hand and the plate flat so I don't get any of those bits around the outside which could absolutely ruin things so flat even pressure and then remove Ooh, I haven't done too bad a job now you can see that because of the watercolor cardstock it's a bit patchy so I'll show you what I mean all right so I have the graphite black reinker I'm just going to put a tiny little drop of this on a non-porous surface. I have a water brush with a tiny little bit of water in there, not much. You just dip the water brush into the reinker and paint it onto the image. Now, what happens is as this soaks in and dries, whilst it won't be entirely perfect, it's a pretty darn good match and it makes it look like your image has stamped perfectly. It's a bit of a cheat for working on watercolour cardstock and that's why I use the uh, Brilliance Black. And you can see that that makes it much darker. I'm going to dry my ink off with a heat gun because I have a terrible habit of putting my fingers in the wet ink and smearing my image. Uh, even as careful as you can be, it's a really good idea. Then what I'm doing is going over just the very edge of the image with a Copic Multiliner just to make sure it has that beautiful crisp edge as it was originally drawn. I've just quickly used a Copic marker to uh, define the edge of the pink so it looks like she's standing on something. And now I'm just using a black archival ink pad to add a teensy bit of text just here. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go for there. Done. What I've done now is I've put one of the uh, masks over the top. This one is also from Dilutions. Um, I've just put a little bit of paper, that poor man's mask, over the top of where my image is because I don't really want to colour it. I'm going to add some sparkle with the Lindy's Stamp Gang, a bit of bubbly. Now this is really pale. Um, all I really want is a faint design in the background. Now to get this to work, you need to hold it from quite a distance. Um, you won't even be able to see the sprayer here. And just gently spritz over the top of the mask. Now the mistake most people make is adding too much. And what you'll find is it then bleeds under the edge of the plastic and spreads. And that's really not what you want. A quick blast with the heat gun. And from one direction, you can't see that there's any difference whatsoever. And from the other, you can see that very subtle shimmer spray. Now, as I said, I haven't sprayed it all over. Just wanted to add another layer and get something else in there. I have um, a stencil from the Crafters Workshop and some Walnut Ink Distress Stain. I'm using an ink blending tool from Ink Essentials to sort of squish some of that colour through the template. That way I'll end up with really nice dark flowers. I'm going to do this twice. Just move the stencil as you need to, but make sure you don't move it while you're adding the ink, otherwise it can make a bit of a mess. So that gives me a little pattern down the bottom here. While I've got my Distress ink pad out, I'm going to apply some around the edges as a border. I just ink up and pull around the edges. Now I like to pat off on my non-stick mat first, just to sort of make sure that the ink is going to be distributed evenly. Just be a bit careful in the corners so you don't pull them up. So by adding the border you really brought the centre into focus and made that uh, colour in the middle really punch. For my last step I'm going to mix some of the texture paste 
in America you might know this as modeling paste and the brand is Yosonia's. And I've got a few different micas, which is Potion Purple, Grab a Guy Gold, Delphinium Turquoise, and Hottie Patootie Pink. And I'm just going to mix a tiny bit of each of these with some modeling paste, not all together, separate little blobs. Now I'm not going to need heaps. And then in goes a tiny little bit of the magicals. And just mix that around until the dye activates, until it doesn't look lumpy anymore. The main thing is, is to get it mixed evenly. And then I just sort of scrape it into a little ball so it's ready to use. All right, so I've just cleaned off the palette knife. And what I'm going to do is use this um, text stencil from, from Crafters Workshop, sorry, as kind of a border. So I'm going to put text in the corner here. So you can really start with any of these colors. And I just sort of spread until the color stops coming off. Then grab another one and I don't bother cleaning my palette knife between. Mostly because um, I'm going to be mixing the colors on here anyway. So it doesn't really matter that much. That way it doesn't look quite so flat and you actually get um, new colors on here sometimes. So something you might not have anticipated. And then you remove the stencil and leave it to dry. Now it's not leaping out at you, um, which is exactly what I'm after. I'm after something subtle. I don't want it to be right in your face. Now I'm also going to do a little bit in the other corner. And again, pulling that off. Now the trick is to letting this dry without anything touching it, including your fingers. Go and wash the modeling paste off the stencil straight away or it will dry on there and it will never come off. Now you can really see that Delicata ink pad when you hold this to the light and those vibrant colors against the black look absolutely, they just stand out. So I've just finished it really simply. And when you get up close, you can see that text that I've done with the texture paste or the modeling cream is really subtle, but that's all I wanted. I just wanted something um, that would match the colors in the background without taking over, but add just that extra element. You've got that beautiful Delicata ink, that little spray, of the Lindy Stamp Gang just to give again another element to the background. For me that's kind of what it's all about. It's a whole lot of little things, little elements that come together to create a really interesting um, page or piece to look at. So the more you look the more you'll see. So I realize there were a lot of steps in this, but I hope you've enjoyed watching how I created this piece. And this could easily be a card front or a tag or a journal page or even a mixed media piece on canvas. So I hope you've got some new ideas here and I'll be back with more soon. Thanks so much for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye.